Welcome back to episode 52. It's been a while since my last video. I've had a few issues with the workshop, Covid complications and then Christmas and New Year. A few people had messaged me about the front seats, so I thought I'd post a short video as this might be more helpful than sending out a couple of photographs. I had actually planned to do a similar video in the summer when there'd be better lighting and it wasn't so cold, but hopefully the garage lighting will be bright enough to do the job and if it's not, I might just redo the video when the weather's better. So for most of the interior, I chose to use Newton Commercial. There are several good upholstering companies out there, but because I didn't have any original seats to reupholster, I needed brand new seats, and Newton's had quite a selection to choose from, and as luck would have it, they were in the middle of producing a new style of interiors. Newton sent me a few of the samples and design ideas, and when I saw this design, I knew straight away that this was the look I was aiming for, and I ended up buying Newton's door cards, the carpet, the mats, the seats, the headlinings, rear parcel shell, and a few other bits to finish off the interior. The door cards looked great, though they were a little tricky to fit as they were a tiny bit thicker than the original. To make them fit, I had to carefully lift the top lip on the door just to make some room for the extra thickness. For now, I'm just using the first set of door furniture that I could get my hands on, and I also added door compartments, which I bought from Minisport, which gives me somewhere to keep my phone and my glasses and some gloves for when I'm filling up at the petrol station. The rear cards are the same design and were fairly straightforward to fit and just need a little bit of a clean as I've just noticed everything's starting to look a bit dusty. The headlining and the visors are again from Newton's. The hardest part when fitting these visors is finding the original screw holes in the roof of the car. I'll admit I struggled to find them and Dennis from the previous videos ended up fitting them for me. Headlining looks great, but there is a little crease that I need to sort out which I think we pushed back when we installed the windscreen rubber. The top dash rail was recovered by Newton's and the bottom rail is brand new for Minisport. I have planned on making my own dashboard, but in the end I opted for a walnut design sold by Anglo Classic Car Parts. The air vents are just for show at the minute until I decide what to do with them. Behind the glove box there isn't anything other than easy access and I'm still wondering about installing a car radio or not. I fitted the usual Smith's gauges into the centre section of the dash and a couple of extra gauges into the right hand side glove box lid. To complement the dashboard, I added a Mountney Classic Walnut steering wheel. I fitted a few basic switches and the choke cable works really well. I still need to sort out the heater cable hole though, as I bypassed the heater valve and because it's not connected, the cable just keeps falling out, so I removed it. The gear knob I got from eBay, and with the car being stickered with the number 8, it seemed a good choice using a number 8 pool ball. The gear stick gator and the carpets and mats are all again from Newton's. The carpet was a little tricky to fit and I still have a little bit to sort out but it does look good, although it does need a bit of a hoover. The seat belts are also new and these are bought from Minisport. It took me a while to suss out which bolts to use were and I did end up having to email the manufacturers. The seats are brand new seats and are listed as Mini Suffolk Mark II reclining seats on Newton's website. They were fairly easy to install and they sell a subframe that makes fitting the seats a doddle. There is an adjuster at the front to move the seat position forwards and backwards and if I was to be picky I would say that this could be made a bit shorter as it is quite long but it's not a problem. There's plenty of room inside the car when the seats are fitted and a question I was asked was how can anyone get in the back? When I first fitted them I actually thought getting into the back would be out of the question as when the seats are lifted, the headrest hits the roof lining. The seats are recliners, but even that didn't allow anyone easy access to the back. I'd pretty much come to the conclusion that sitting in the back was impossible, until I found out that at the back of the seat base is a bar that you can operate to allow the tilting of the seat. I'd probably not actually have anyone in the back to be fair, but it's nice and clean and cosy in the back now, so the option's always there if I need it. There was some spare fabric left over as well, so my wife made some cushions for the back seats and I think that adds a bit of a nice touch too. I'm undecided as to what to do with the boot area though for now. I'd possibly like to kit out the entire area as I think it'll definitely look better and hopefully add a little bit of soundproof into the car, but it's mainly a lack of money at the moment so that's maybe a job for the summer. But overall I'm really pleased with the interior, everything looks nice, it's comfy and it's practical, but all I need to do now is to make sure that I look after it. <laughs> 